Second, the motion for the approval of the second reading. The CLEMAC, who was going to buy it, went back to their backup plan and will be, will be building the ammunition primer, primer plant at Powercom in Trousdale County. Mayor Potts and I are discussing what can be done or will be approved by the city of Gornsville. I will keep you in the loop as, as, as to what, if anything, happens. I'm, dis, I'm disappointed this did not happen, as I believe this would have been a good thing for Smith County and Gornsville's future. But we will keep working to get this property sold. Uh, update on the salary study. All the job surveys are done and they've been turned in. They're working through those. They are working with surrounding counties and other counties throughout the state and private industry right now pulling comparable data. Hopefully this will be done complete by March. Uh, budget request sheets will be going out to elected officials and department heads very soon. Uh, budget talks are just around the corner. If we continue at our current revenue collections, we should have our three million in sufficient operating capital goal made at the end of this fiscal year. That means we, we will have done it in two years instead of three. And at that time, the goal would be, would be that we give money back to in a property tax reduction. 25 cents of that property tax was set aside to gain that balance, and we should give that back when that goal is met. Census data will start trickling in this spring with full data here by the end of summer. Redistricting in that process will begin shortly after that. For that. Are there any questions? If not, we'll move on to today's in the financial report. On page seven, begins with uh, the cash flows. I updated them through December. We were just a couple of days shy of closing out the month of December, so I may update them again uh, for the next meeting. I go through page 13 for all funds. You may have any questions. What was that? questions for Daisy if not we'll move on all right we'll go to number nine new business and we have a special guest here tonight Ms. Sophie will you come down we're 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 much royalty tonight we have a two-time state champion golfer with us and 2020 is it girl lady girl junior junior golfer of the year that's all happened since this came out so but we uh we wanted to, to acknowledge sophie and her success and so what are we we've, we've got a little presentation for her, and tomorrow will be sophie lender day in smith county so whereas sophie lender is a sophomore at gorsley high school she is ranked in the top 10 in the nation of the 2023 according to golf week and whereas sophie finished in the top seven or better as high as second of the tennessee women's amateur championship in 2018 19 and 20 and whereas she also played placed third in the Tennessee Girls Junior Amateur in 2020 and qualified for several United States Golf Association championships including the 2019 Women's Four Ball Championship in which she and her par partner advanced to the round of 16, the 2019 USGA Women's Amateur Champion Championship where she shot an even par in the two-day qualifying to advance to the match play portion of the championship and whereas Sophie has also rep represented the East team at the Tennessee Junior Cup hosted by Scott Stallings in 2018, 19, and 20. She was the girls MVP for the East in 2019 and 20. And whereas Sophie has participated in the Tennessee Cup in 2019 and 2020 in which she raised $1,000 for the St. Jude's Children's Hospital and the Cedric Foundation. And whereas Sophie has loved competing for Gornsville High School she has had a very successful freshman campaign with her teammate Casey Milone. They won all their regular season matches and the district and region tournaments. Sophie was the individual champion in all of those. 
She kept off the 2019 campaign with a state individual championship, winning the tournament by a margin of five shots. And whereas as a sophomore, she again won all her regular season matches. She won the district tournament with a minus six and the region with a four under. And then she shot a two day total of six under at the 2020 TSSAA state championship to defend her individual title. And now therefore, the Smith County Mayor, on this the 11th day of January 2021, does here present this letter of honor to Miss Sophie Lander for her accomplishments and future endeavors representing Smith County, Tennessee, and proclaims January 12th as Sophie Lander Day. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Playing, she spends my time. I'm, I have a bad habit of refreshing Twitter trying to see how she's doing. So, <laughs> congratulations! Thank you. Awesome. All right. Letter B is the appointments. It is uh, the committee appointment list resolution and. As you heard earlier, we've already had a change there, so we'll have to redo the District 1 seats and for those. Does that need to, do we need to approve on that, Jeremy? Yes, we do. All right, I would take a motion to uh, approve that committee list. Motion to approve Erica. Second, second. Glenn Reese. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Letter C is our approvals. What you have there is a receiver bond for Thomas Dillahaye, statutory bond for Thomas Dillahaye, Terry Collins' statutory bond, and a statutory bond for Steve Coble. I would take a discussion. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. No, and those. Okay. All right. So now we will. I will take a motion to approve items one through four. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Glenn Reese. Second. Second. Terry Gibbons. All right. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Opposed. Motion. Our approvals are carried. Thank you. All right, item number five is that a lease agreement and debt obligation for the compactor for Smith County Landfill. And that's just going back and passing. There was a resolution inside that lease agreement with uh, the uh, landfill compactor that we, we did in November. So all we're doing is passing that back through just for CAT's paperwork. I would take a motion to approve. Motion to approve, Jimmy. Second. I have a motion, Jimmy Winfrey, and second, Mr. Jason Stewart. Any discussion or questions? If not, we better do a roll call. Stacy on that one. Lynn Reese? Yes. Terry Gibbons? Yes. Billy Bass? Yes. Brandon Kirby? Yes. Jason Stewart? Yes. Jimmy Winfrey? Yes. Josh Brown? Yes. Dalton Pascal? Yes. Shannon Minchie? Yes. Erica Evil? Yes. Ron Shoemake? Yes. Ron Cowan? Yes. Ron Cowan? Yes. Betty Stout? Yes. Steve Babcock? Yes. Casey Elrod? Yes. Bill Reese? Yes. Tommy Bain? Yes. Joey Nixon? Yes. Dennis Hackett? Yes. Tim Beller? Yes. Teresa Gross? Yes. Frank Woodard? Yes. All right. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to item D, resolutions. Resolution 01-2021-01 is establishing the property assessor's discretionary fund. And I think we set this originally up back last year, was it, when we did this? Uh, it was discussed in budget finance. finance last year. All right. Uh, and Terry is here to kind of talk about that if he wants to come up and give us his we started last year there is a Tennessee code annotated law that states that 
South Carthage, Carthage, and Gordon will share with the cost of what it cost us per parcel in their cities, just their parcels within their city. They've never been charged for this. This is something that basically we could have done 16 years ago. Um, but the way that we've got it set up, we sent out the bills. Um, we do have Gordon's check. Carthage has approved it. We haven't received the check. South Carthage, we still have. But basically this fund, is just charging them for half of what we do. We're the city assessor, just like we are the county assessor. We get building permits monthly from most of our cities, so we go and look at everything that's happening, whether it be a uh, wood deck or a new house or whatever the case may be, just like we get from Sonia for the county. So basically, we're doing that. So the cities are supposed to share at the cost of the counties. Uh, the cost for parcels, uh, it's about $15.39 when we figured it a, a year ago, so they're responsible for half of that. In the county, our parcel count, uh, when we did this back in 19, was 13,589 parcels, that's county by. Now that includes real property and personal property and exempt properties. So we have to review exempt properties, whether it be a church, school, whatever, uh, just like we do the rest of it. Now the, uh, may ask why do you do that for the exempt properties what got us started doing that is a lot of churches started selling their parsonages well if you don't ask for instance somebody that lives in Hillcrest subdivision when was that house built then we have no clue to do that we have to act, actually have the actual year built on our property record card for you that are familiar with that so it's better to ask questions years ago and so just like the Turner building then we had the Gasby where it was the government accountability standard you know where we had to actually put a value on everything and all the guy that Gasby did was come down to our office to get the cards which I would provide him and save the county 50000 but that's another discussion for another day but we've got everything in the county measured as far as buildings except one and we're getting, working on it uh, because of COVID and other things is the dam. We will eventually get in. But basically, all this resolution is saying we're going to give half out to the county. It's going to bring in roughly $25,000 if they pay annually rather than a lump sum. We could have sent them a lump sum for the entire reappraisal. But the county, or, I'm sorry, the city mayor requested we not do that because they didn't want that much uh, money involved with that. And this is something that's annual, it's the Tennessee Code Annotated Law, and all I'm asking for that discretionary fund is for our office, like for instance, the mayor thankfully helped us out. I got either 12 or 14 year old copy and it went completely. They can't order cases or anything. So luckily uh, we had to get two thousand dollars or something like that in order to get a new copy. I hope it would last forever. And they were out the county mayor's office prior to us getting it. But still, you know, it served its purpose for us. The good thing with the new one is now we can hopefully scan and read and send things which we hadn't been able to do before. Are there any questions? Of course, we sent those three bills out. We'll do that again for 2020. Uh, Jeremy's kind of been my point man. I know with the city of Carthage. Uh, and now we're going to work on the city of South Carthage. We've already got it, like I said, we to the <coughs> If you have any questions, we can, you know, answer those. But it's basically, you have to do nothing and you're going to get half that money. Is that $25,000 total for all the cities? Yes, sir. And we'll get roughly half that. Y'all can put it half. Excuse me, but you know, when, when you look at my office, I know some of y'all may not be that familiar with it, but since 2004, we've been a man or a person short. And when you look at that, when you count the salary, the insurance, the training that we have to have for their the retirement and all that, I mean, we're saving the county forty-five to $50,000 a year. Now, I'm not asking like other offices have to say, okay, we're a half person short, so we're gonna divvy that up, you know, with the three employees that I have in there, I'm not asking 
Um, we have no vehicle, or I don't have a vehicle. Uh, we just went to Edgar Evans, and I went ahead and asked the counties. Uh, we had a Middle Tennessee Assessors Association meeting. Uh, the 17 counties there, uh, either 12 or 13, had their own personal vehicle to drive. I'm not asking for one to drive home. I'm just asking one once I get there. And when we verify sales, which we've had to do in order to raise that value of the penny, then you're looking at putting a whole lot of miles you know, on something because those individual sales, we go and look at them where they're at throughout the county. We have to do that because if something sells for 150,000, we got 100,000, we need to go out there and see, has it been renovated? Is there a new shop? Uh, you know, what have they added on? Whatever the case may be. And you can't tell that by sitting in the office. You just have to get up, you know, get out and go. Uh, the one thing that hurts us on the value of the penny every year is our ratio. Ratio is what things are selling for versus what we've got them appraised at. On average, we're probably about 20% too low. They're doing a ratio. We've got to have all the numbers in by February the 1st, which when you look at it, the state assessed properties uh, and your personal property, they get off the same. So if it's 20%, then they knock 20% off the top. So if we had a million dollars coming in for uh, personal property, we would only bring in 800,000. Same thing with state assessed property. And you know, which makes it very difficult to keep that value that penny up. At first, you have to monitor sales so closely in order to uh, do that. You know, I've been blessed. I, I've got the same staff that I had 16 years ago. I think if, well, I know there's not another uh, office in the county. You say, well, how does that help us? That experience is invaluable when it comes to the job that we do each and every day. Because if you have to train somebody new, it's just going to take them a while to get the experience. Can they get there? Yes, they can get there. But still, you know, you know I've got Teresa sitting there for 30 plus years that is my right arm, left arm, whatever you want to call it, or both arms, just because she knows and has been through everything. And, you know, I don't want to lose a person. I mean, I really don't. And I hope I never do. It's going to hurt us if that happens. So, I don't know what questions you have. Um, I'll answer, you know, any that you have. I know a lot of y'all were not on the commission or the budget finance maybe when we presented this. Um, it was last March and then again in June or July, August, somewhere around in there. No, not sure. It was before Jeremy actually took over, but I, he was actually here but before Brandon went to general sessions. So. Any questions you got, this will be, like I said, an annual thing. Uh, it's figured on the total budget, and you just buy that by the number of parcels, and that's, what you, that's how you get what price per parcel is. And then you divide that in half, county pays half, city pays half. And that's the Tennessee code annotated. So this is going to be a yearly thing. It's not just reappraisal. Correct. That's correct. Now, the reappraisal year, if they chose to, they could do the lump sum and do all five years. Now, one thing that I'm looking at, I don't know that I will, I've got to talk to my state people, but we're starting talks for reappraisal, possibly going to a four-year plan. Like this year, we've got a ratio that we have to do. Next year, we've got reappraisal. If we could get it to a four-year plan, we would only have to go through one ratio versus two ratios. And the way things are going up, up, and up, that's gonna make us money. Now, conversely, if it dropped, like it did in 2008, 2009, then it could possibly cost us a little bit of money because we're on a four-year plan. But it would mean we'd have to review 33%, 33 and a third percent of the parcels per year versus right now we're reviewing about 25% of those per year. But it keeps things more current, which we like. Now, whether I would have to have my part-time person go full-time, I'm not sure because it's going to be extra work because you're looking at uh, 13,589 parcels and I'm just roughly off the top of my head, that's 67, I mean you're looking at uh, uh, 43,400 parcels to be reviewed a year 
versus around 30 to 300 a year now. It's where it requires you being on the road mower. But most of the time, we get out there, we don't see things dilapidated and run down. It's just the opposite. It's renovated, sold for $80,000 more than what we've got the praise to have. And we have to make the adjustment. Yes, you don't. Um, so this is already in Tennessee Code Avenue. Okay. Yes. Um, there's not an action from the commission tonight that we need to put that into place. It's already in place. So what we're doing tonight is you're asking that half go to a discretionary fund for you right. and half go to the general fund. That's correct. If this doesn't pass tonight, where does it go? I, I would guess general fund. I, I don't know. I mean, but... That's one on one. Yes, it would all be maintained in the general fund regardless. This would this resolution would establish a designated account within the general fund for half of it to be noted to be used at the discretion of the property assessor. And then if you have um, would those I guess those um, expenses would they come before the commission? All expenses would have to come to the commission for approval uh, for appropriation. So yes. Um, I guess my concern is that we're doing something that would be perpetuity, like this would be continuing on. Um, and we've had issues with discretionary funds in the past where we've had elected officials and we haven't felt like we tell them, hey, you can't spend this on this. And then we open the whole can of worms with bonuses and salary supplements and that kind of thing. Uh, there was a line item in resolution two tonight that was for the property assessor's office that we took off at budget and finance, um, where you were asking for $6,990 in salary supplements. What was that? It's just gonna be for bonuses for the employees that work there. And, and, and the reason for that is, like I said, I mean, we're a person short. So, I mean, we're saving you forty-five to fifty thousand dollars a year. I, I don't think that's asking for too much in return. I mean, I've got I mean, 32, uh, 25, uh, 17 years of experience in those three people. Uh, it, 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 if you know much about the appraisal business or if you're in the real estate business, we can't afford to not have that experience there. It, it, it's a way to uh, appreciate them. You know, I, I didn't ask at the end of the year that you know, whatever I had left, split it between them and all that. I, I made above board with, with all of it. And, and I feel like it's a minimal, very minimal, of what they're worth. Because people don't realize how much, I mean, when, when you're responsible for 84% of the total taxes brought into this county, Nothing getting in the rest of the offices is the most important office that we have. Because if, if you snooze in there, you're losing a lot of money. That's. And I'm not. Right. You know, I'm saying this. And, and I'm not against sure, other people that have discretion. But, you know. I just think we've opened again worms for ourselves a while back, where we start letting people. Um, and honestly, I feel like we're kind of a gray area of what we're allowed to tell elected like, officials what to do with their discretionary funds. But then we also have certain offices that have wanted to bonus out employees and we're not allowed to do that as well. So is there a way that, I mean, come budget time, is it possible where you could just say, hey, look, I have saved account this account, can I put this half into my budget? It's in a lot of If I don't do a discretionary fund, what am I going to do if I don't have the money and office supplies to buy that new copier? Because I, I mean, I'm, I can't predict. I, I can't predict that when that copier is going to go out. You know, it's not like I'm trying to slide it to the underground office or something. I mean, it's it's going to be there. Yeah, it's going to be there. So I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying that we can't do it. I'm just saying that you know, what I'm trying to do, and I, and I feel like it's very minimal for what they have done and accomplished and to me they deserve not only this year but in years past. I mean kind of been 
passed over. I don't know what the word is. I'm, I'm not dealing to other departments. I'm just trying to fight for what I believe is right for mine. Going back to the vehicle there, you've been driving your personal vehicle 16 years just doing county business in your first vehicle. Right. How many miles you put on over these on? Well, the Nissan had $416,000. Have you ever received any form of reimbursement for all that? Just for, just for miles. You do but but understand, miles. your mileage, when you look at that, you never come out. Because if you price a vehicle, a truck like me, uh, it's, I mean, used vehicle, $30,000. I think oh, well, I paid for the last one, it did have eighty or 90000 and there's a lot of miles that I don't turn in because you've got this. Like, for instance, when we go, and right now we're not here, we're doing everything perfect, but when we had meetings, then I was never reimbursed because I don't have a fund of going to a state retreat, which is very helpful when you get to see the other 94, you know, assessors and all that. It's, we don't have that. Get the money that we got from Upper Cumber, which wound up being about three hundred thousand dollars because the building, before we got the law actually changed. Of course, the parking, when we go down town and all that, I mean, it just came out of my pocket. I didn't have a, you know, a fund for for something like that. Uh, you know, I, I did run it up the other day somewhere close, and I, I know this is probably you're probably going to say, wow. In the 16 years, somewhere close to a million miles is what I've done. Now, that's not close to going to ball games. I'm talking about just for the county purpose of you know, which is quite a few. You know, three, four so, you know. And then if we have to have extra days, which I can't predict until we get that sales log, then I need Shane for more than two days a week. Discretionary fund is what we have to do. Because last year we just had to scrape paying the best we could uh, because of that. But those need to be reviewed. Yeah, I could sit in the office and not do it, and they penny would have went down last year if we had done Before we said that on the I didn't even check it before I came, and the big reason, uh, Jason, I've got a bunch that are ready to measure right now. Uh, it's a wet code that we're not able to get to. And so whatever number I would give you, it's skewed just because I'm going to guess there's 30 to 40 right now countywide at least to be uh, in the houses or to be measured. Was this setting up a fund that they can use without having to come to us for permission to use that money or? Yeah, all expenditures have to be appropriated first. So any, even though the funds even would be at this, for something, he still has to come to us. That's access. right. It still has to go into the budget. It would have to be done in form of the budget amendment. Unless he budgets for that discretionary fund at the beginning of the year, he could always add to his original budget from whatever balance there was in discretionary funds request to have that in the budget from the very beginning of the year during budget time. There's always an option, but like he said, there's times that he doesn't know. That's, I know last year we did have, have to add days for shame, and the mayor and I were able to work with him to find other areas of the general fund budget that was under the mayor's direction that he was able to uh, request a budget amendment to add that for him to work in those extra days for three years. I also do know that uh, just not trying to speak for or against, but just to confirm facts that there have been years that um, Terry has not been able to request full reimbursement for his mileage for work years. The county reimburses at 47 cents a mile. If his budget for what you see in his budget for travel is exhausted, he stops and doesn't request the rest. So I can't confirm that. Any more questions? And this money only comes in if you bid. This, you have to build it to get this correct. Yeah. This don't come through the council. No, it doesn't come through the finance department. Any of that. 
we send the actual wheels out on our letter head uh, to the actual cities. They've had those still trying to prove to them that it's a, even after you send them to state law, they're to question. I, I don't want to sue South Carthage. It's the last thing I want to do. It's not right for others to pay and them not. Well, you, you threw that amount out of $25,000. That $25,000 ain't for the wrong thing to do. That's correct. You're looking for 25 Right. Discretionary 25 and the one Yes. yes. Hey. Questions, do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Motion to approve, Jay Second. Second, Greta. So I have a motion by Terry and a second by Greta. Uh, is there any other discussion or questions? Yes. Motion. Resolution. 
2021 passes. All right. All right. Resolutions two through six are budget amendments for the general fund, drug enforcement fund, highway fund, capital projects, solid waste fund. Uh, do we want to group those and pass them once or vote them separately? Basically working within their budgets. Like all security. Second. Motion by Jason to group. Second by Glenn. Any questions or discussion? Uh, Jason Stewart is going to group it two through six. Uh, any questions or discussions on that? Yes. Terry Gibbons? Yes. Billy Bass? Yes. Brenda Kirby? Yes. Jason Stewart? Yes. Jimmy Winkfrey? Yes. Josh Brown? Yes. Dalton Pascal? Yes. Shannon Meachie? Yes. Erica Evil? Yes. Ron Shoemake? Yes. Ron Cowan? Yes. Eddie Stout? Yes. Steve Backhawk? Yes. Casey Elrod? Yes. Bill Reese? Yes. Tommy Bain? Yes. Joey Nixon? Yes. Dennis Hackett? Yes. Tim Beller? Yes. Terese Gross? Yes. Frank Woodard? Yes. That's a shame. Thank you. All right. Items number seven and nine are just interdepartmental transfers. Uh, item seven is taking the old tanker that we're replacing in the Central District moving into the uh, the landfill. Johnny was here, he was just gonna use it for a water, another water truck and to use to the hose it and to clean equipment with it as well. Uh, item number nine is that is just the, that old flatbed ambulance that used to be in maintenance that we didn't use anymore and we may be using it out there as, a, as a, gonna use it as a fuel truck. So basically seven and nine are just moving uh, equipment from general fund to the landfill. We can vote on those separately or a group. It's motion to group. Motion to group. <coughs> that was Casey. Second was work. Steve Adam got it. All right. So I have a motion and a second to group. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? <coughs> All right. Now I take a motion to approve resolution seven and then. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve and second. Ron Schumann was a motion, the second was Casey. All right, let's do a roll call. Glenn Reese? Yes. Terry Gibbons? Yes. Billy Bass? Yes. Greta Kirby? Yes. Jason Stewart? Yes. Jimmy Winfrey? Yes. Josh Brown? Yes. I couldn't hear you, sorry. You said yes, okay. Dalton Pascal? Yes. Shannon Meachie? Yes. Erica Evil? Yes. Ron Schumann? Yes. Ron Cowan? Yes. Eddie Stout? Yes. Steve Babcock? Yes. Casey Elrod? Yes. Bill Reese? Yes. Tommy Bain? Yes. Joey Nixon? Yes. Dennis Hackett? Yes. Tim Miller? Yes. Teresa Gross? Yes. Frank Woodard? Yes. Resolution number 0121-11 is a resolution extending the Families First Corona Response Act Employer Paid Leave Department. And it states, whereas this United States Congress enacted the Families First Coronavirus Response Act, or the FFCRA, which required employers to provide up to 80 hours of paid sick leave at the employer's regular rate of pay for employees who qualified under the act due to the effects of COVID-19. Whereas the required leave provisions in the act expired December 31st, 2020, 
and whereas the state of Tennessee is an ongoing state of emergency at the order of the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and whereas the Smith County government of Tennessee desires to continue to make available up to 80 hours of sick and paid leave to the employees affected by COVID-19. And now therefore, <coughs> be it resolved by the Smith County Board of Commissioners that Smith County shall continue to provide all county employees up to 80 hours of sick paid leave at the employer's regular rate of pay as described in the Family's First Coronavirus Response Act, despite the expiration of that. Eligibility for this pay, paid sick leave shall continue to be determined based on the eligibility requirements that were found within the act applicable up to the 80 hours of paid sick leave at the employer's regular rate of pay and upon the same terms. The county shall provide shall provide this paid sick leave once, <coughs> leave once for each employee, whether taken prior to or after the passage of this resolution. This resolution shall expire upon the expiration of the Tennessee State of Emergency as it relates to the COVID-19 pandemic. Any, any questions or discussion on this resolution? Motion to approve Joy Nixon. Second. Second, Glenn Reese. I have a motion and a second to approve. Uh, is there any questions or discussion? The only, uh, we discussed this earlier, the only issue that I, I see with this is we're approving this 80 hours to come out of all these departments' uh, funds, but there's actually no reimbursement going back into the department's funds for all this time that's being paid out. And you take a, a large department, uh, so you've got 10 employees that's been out with 80 hours paid sick leave that's going to come out of that department's fund. That's 800 hours that we're going to be paying for that generally wouldn't have been budgeted in that department's fund for the time. May I speak? Yeah, and I, yeah, if you say, uh, not necessary. And I, I agree with you on that. Um, I'm going to say that the main provision this provides is so that employees are not losing their sick time they've already accrued in most cases. In most cases, most of your employees have been with the county long enough, they're accruing that sick leave on the books anyway. And if they're out for reasons due to the pandemic or it's just a simple sick leave, they're gonna be taking that leave, um, which the county would still be paying out. I think the pandemic is really what's given the frustrating results that, that you're talking about because I think it's increased in probably your uh, overtime, mostly in your uh, public safety realm. So in your EMS and your sheriff, you're probably seeing more overtime having to be worked because these people are having to be out to be quarantined or they're having to take care of a child that's quarantined from school. Um, this would more just protect their sick leave they recruit and earn through the county and not require them to take that sick leave. When it expired, we had a few people along the way um, probably I won't I won't say how many hours but there's probably been a few people that had it not been for this provision that expired on December 31st that they would have not gotten paid at all for their leave that they were required basically by their employer to take to stay out of work to keep everybody else safe so I do agree that it's we're probably going to see that result whether we pass this or not because if they're going to have to quarantine and take off they're going to have yeah. to do it whether and that's what we, we we discussed this before we had it done is if Jason you get the flu tomorrow you're going to take two days off three days off and you're going to take your sick time nobody's telling you you have to do that if you get a tested positive or a child's positive whatever the circumstance is basically you're being told you got to stay home for two weeks. certainly and i understand that yeah. and this is something we need to, it needs to happen right i 100 percent agree with that uh but going back to the people who don't have that sick time that's built up that's already well, that they would have been able to take that time right. that was, that's already accounted for in the budget, uh, which has happened. Uh, you know, that, that's extra money that's coming out of, the, out of that department's budget at that time. And then going back to, well, I'm out for two weeks, I'm having to pull other officers or other uh, employees then right. to both these positions. Right. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's a strain. Right. It is a strain. But, look, like, you know. And it's not just a few thousand dollars, it's tens of thousands right. of dollars. It is. Awesome. About it. And like I said, we we did get three hundred thousand dollars in reimbursements back earlier, and we've kind of hold it on to it to see where this goes. But <coughs> we don't. I mean, who knows? They may send another three hundred thousand. We don't know. I mean, I, who knows what's coming down that road again? I mean, they're they're talking about doing some more stuff, so I I fully expect they will send more money back our way again. 
argue on that. But, uh, all right. Any other questions or discussion? All right. We'll do a roll call, please. Yes. Karen Gibbons? Yes. Billy Bowers? Yes. Brennan Kirby? Yes. Jason Stewart? Yes. Jimmy Winfrey? Yes. Josh Brown? Yes. Tom Paschal? Yes. Shannon Michi? Yes. Erica Evil? Yes. Ron Shoemake? Yes. Ron Cowan? Yes. Betty Stout? Yes. Steve Babcock? Yes. Casey Elrod? Yes. Bill Reese? Yes. Tommy Bain? Yes. Joey Nixon? Yes. Dennis Hackett? Yes. Tim Beller? Yes. Tracy Gross? Yes. Frank Ritter? Yes. Yeah. That's your name. Thank you. All right. Letter E is our notaries. You have a list of rotaries tonight. I will take a motion to approve. I will do approve. Second. Motion to approve. Tommy, second. Casey? Elrod, Commissioner Elrod. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion. Uh, Tommy. All right. Out of 10 is other business. It is the ambulance report, the coroner's report, which you received as a handout, uh, the rescue squad, the EMA report, the sheriff's report, the fire department report, and the sales tax report. Uh, is there any questions on any of those reports? Move on to item number 11. I have a motion to adjourn. Thank you, uh, Frank Woodard. Motion to adjourn. Second, Steve Babcock. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed?